Hey there, and welcome back to the dev channel, Max Codes. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create this little animation here that you're gonna see load up on the screen right now. All right, now what's going on here is we have a title label and it's just animating in with different NS layout constraints. Now I do this with obviously NS layout constraint and then layout if needed on the view of our view controller. I also throw it in a spring animation that we're gonna write, okay? So let's go ahead and create a new Xcode project. I'm gonna go ahead and choose single view application and I'm gonna call this auto layout balance animation. Go ahead and create that. And I'm gonna be throwing the source code on GitHub. I'm also going to be migrating all source code or future source code to my site, maxcodes.io, similar to what Brian does over at Let's Build That App, because that's a super nice way of doing it. And I think that will help you all out really nicely. Okay, but for now, it's gonna be on GitHub. Link is in the description for this code if you just wanna go click it and check it out right now without watching the video. It's really simple code, less than like 40 lines. So I'm sure a lot of you can just go do that if you want. And if you do, just leave a like and subscribe before you do that. All right, now before we get started, I want to let you know that I'm gonna be creating a video in the next couple days. And that video is going to be a video of me talking about what content I'm gonna be continuing to put on this channel. And I wanna make it really clear just so you all know what to expect. Basically, I'm gonna be adding a ton of advanced content on a specific day of the week, each week, right? So Saturdays, for example, I want to release more advanced content for those of you looking for that. Because I know a lot of you here want beginner content, but I also know a lot of you here want advanced content. So I'm not gonna talk about that too much in this video, but I just wanted to let you know that that's something that's gonna be coming out in the next couple days, because I know a lot of you have been asking me for that, or at least an explanation on that. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna create a label. I'll say let label is equal to UI label. I'm gonna say label dot translates autorizing mask and constraints is set to false. And if you've never done this before, all that's really going on here is I'm saying, okay, we want to write our own constraints, don't generate your own. All right, based off the frame and stuff. Label dot text is equal to, I'm gonna say max codes dot IO slash books or courses. I'm coming out with a stickers page to give you guys some stickers, but I haven't written that page yet. Maybe by the time you're watching this, that page is up. Go check out the site if you want. All right, next thing I'll do, say label.font is equal to UI font dot system font of size 24, weight bold. I wanna make it a bit bigger. I'm gonna make it like 32, just so it's like huge. <laughs> All right, and then next thing is we just need to add it on the screen. So view dot add sub view and label. Now, when we compile this, we're gonna get pretty much exactly what you see here on the screen, except for the font size is gonna be a bit bigger. And if you want a video on like custom fonts, I can go ahead and make that sometime this or next week. And uh, I can do that, but only if a lot of people want it, drop a comment letting me know. And now that I think about it, drop a comment just so that the channel can get more engagement too. I wanna be straight up. I'm not just trying to get you to comment unless I'm gonna tell you that <laughs> like I just did. Point is, I'm not saying drop a comment if you want a video just so I can get more engagement. I'm just saying drop a comment if you actually wanna see that font video because I'll make it. Okay, so you don't see anything on the screen, okay? Now, for a very good reason, and I overlooked this, we actually didn't write any auto layout constraints. So let's go ahead and write some by saying, uh, let's say label.center y anchor dot constraint is equal to view dot center y anchor, and then we'll just activate that. And that's another thing. I have like seven courses out right now, and the two that I'm working on, so I'll have about nine here, or eight, nine, yeah, seven plus two is nine. I'm working on an in app purchase course and a uh, animations course, but that's not why I'm bringing that up. I'm wondering if a lot of you want a course dedicated to just auto layout constraints. Cause I know that can be kind of tricky for some people. It would be a really short course cause there's not much to auto layout constraints, but you can let me know on social media or wherever you want if that's something you're interested in. All right, so anchor, or let's not do that yet. Let's say this should kind of just put it in the center of the screen. Uh, just to be safe, let's copy that and put center X anchor and center X anchor cause that will for sure put it on the screen in the center. I'm thinking though, if if we don't mark the X anchor, it probably should just put it to the left. Okay, so it's right in the middle. But if I comment that out very clearly, it's probably just gonna go to the left there and start at the left. And hopefully that helps you understand a little bit more about how auto layout constraints work. 
All right, so what just happened? Didn't mean to open that. I'm gonna close that. But basically, we want the end state of this to be right in the middle like it just was, right? So we don't want this to be the initial state of the constraints, right? But we do want to modify that constraint. So what we can do is kind of create a constraint that we can update. So let's create a variable and we're just gonna call this x anchor and we'll say, is equal to, well, we'll just say, yeah, whatever, x anchor, doesn't really matter what we call it. And we'll set this equal to label dot left anchor. We'll just say center x anchor to keep it consistent. Dot constraint is equal to, and then this constructor right here, except for we're gonna choose the one with the constant. And what we'll do is we'll say view dot right anchor, and then we'll say constant is, and we'll say 200, and then we'll just activate that and set it to true. Well, we'll activate it after. So go ahead and get that line in there. And then what we can do is say x anchor dot const sorry x anchor dot is active is set to true, and this is going to cause a problem. If you try and compile this, you're likely going to get some logs down here, and then it's probably going to look exactly the same as this. Okay, and the reason that's going to happen is because we've we're setting the x anchor, but then we're setting the x anchor again right here, right? So you'll see it causes problems down here. It says hey something broke, and it didn't work. So you'll see the label's not on the screen. So what that really means is that it kept this constraint as active, not this one, okay? I expected this to overwrite it, but I guess that's not how constraints work. I'm gonna go ahead and click the debugger view right here, and we should be able to see it off the screen if it allows us to. UI label, okay, it's not gonna show us it's off the screen, but it is off the screen to the right. If the debugger had that capability, we'd be able to see it off the screen because that's where it is. All right, so, You'll even see, there we go. You'll even see that it's got this line here and it's saying center X anchor. Yeah, all right, whatever. It's the bottom one. It was the bottom one, not that one I clicked on. It looks like they both activated, but obviously it it got rid of this one because this one was activated. All right, I hope that makes sense. Um, and yeah, let's go ahead and change it now. So what we wanna do is instead animate it to this state. So first thing we have to do is not activate it right away. And then the second thing we have to do is kind of overwrite this x anchor variable. You'll see it says we haven't used it, change it to a let, but we don't want to do that because we want to update it. So what we'll do is we'll say x anchor is equal to this. Oops, I accidentally deleted everything. x anchor is equal to this. And then what we'll do is say x anchor dot is active is true. Now, if we compile this, it's probably going to do the exact same thing. Maybe a little bit different. Maybe we won't get any warnings, but one thing I know is it's not really going to do what we want. Okay, we get that unsatisfiable constraints error right there or alert. So what we have to do is first deactivate this before we activate that and before we even overwrite it. So what we should do is copy this line right here or that line right there and paste it right here and set is active is to false. Now, what I haven't tried this out yet, but the behavior I expect is for it just to activate this one like we were expecting initially, right? So it's like this line and these two lines don't even exist at this point. All right, you'll see it looks good. We don't get any errors or alerts. All right, so now what we have to do is instead of activating it all immediately, we just need to simply animate it and get that spring animation in there and use layout if needed. So before we use layout if needed, let's just go ahead and write the animation and then we'll see why we have to use layout if needed. All right, so let's go ahead and say uiview.spring and then we can hit return right there and it's gonna give us this constructor. Duration, I'm gonna say half a second, delay zero. Spring with damping, or let's say delay one, because we don't want it to animate immediately. We just kind of want to wait a second so we can see it animate in before it just compiles and does it automatically. So delay one, spring with damping, we'll say 0.5. That's gonna give it a nice bounce, right? If you say 0.1, it's gonna give it a really nice bounce. If you say 0.9, it's gonna be less of a bounce. Okay, so zero to one is the scale for use use spring with damping. I'm gonna say right in the middle, and that might be a little bit too much. You might wanna use something like 0.6 or 7. All right, spring velocity, I usually just put that at one, but if you want it to fly in really fast, you might use something else. All right, uh, options, I'm just gonna say curve ease in. I usually just pick that one because I can't always tell a difference between the other options, but there is a difference if you wanna be really particular, which is a good idea, obviously, if you wanna make your app exactly how you want it. But let's just choose curve ease in. Tab for animations, we'll hit return, and then we will say tab again, and then we'll get rid of the completion. Okay, now what you might think is, okay, throw these two lines in here. Let's go ahead and compile that, and 
let's see what it has. Okay, so we had an error because view is like way outside of scope. So we wanna say self.view. Okay, if you missed that, just go back and rewatch that part or pause the video and make sure your code looks like this. I know that was a little bit fast. All right, so nothing happened. That's where layout if needed comes in. So what we wanna do is we want to cut that, paste that there, and then we just wanna say self.layout if needed right here. Let's go ahead, oops, not that, <laughs> layout if needed, self.view.layout if needed, and let's recompile our app and it should work. We'll see if we get any problems. I expect it actually to have a problem because we're still activating these immediately. It's just gonna look like that. All right, so it looked a little weird. All right, and I meant to do X anchor this entire time, but we'll just animate it in from the top, I guess. All right, let's see what we got. Okay, so it just automatically did it. So what I want to do is take this one and take these three lines and let's cut it and let's paste it into here. Now, I expect this to behave a little bit weird as well because we're kind of throwing it in with the animations. So a better idea might be to use like a dispatch queue or a perform with delay selector, but you'll see it works just fine. All right, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll do it in this video just to let you guys know what I was thinking. All right, so it bounces in, looks a little weird the way it bounces in. So let's go ahead and write that dispatch queue. We'll say dispatch main.async dot after dispatch main, sorry, dispatch queue dot main dot async after deadline dispatch time dot now plus one second execute and I'm gonna cut this animation out, paste it in here, and then I'll cut these three lines and paste it inside of here. Let's go ahead and compile that and see what it looks like. All right, that's exactly what I expected. So you can see that the UI view, throwing it in the UI view animations actually did junk it up, okay? I didn't expect it to do that, but you can see that it kind of tried to animate those things. So let's go ahead and change this back to 200 and we're gonna get what I showed you in the first of this video, okay? The example project I showed you. Let's go ahead and compile that and let's wait and you'll see it animates in really nicely. All right, now feel free to play around with the spring animations or the spring values and you're gonna get the animation that you're looking for, all right? All right, so that's it for this video. Source code is in the description. And again, I'm gonna be moving that to my website at a point in time. So make sure to check that out if it's not on the GitHub link for whatever reason. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next video tomorrow morning.